Hello, everybody. So we're getting into the last part of Chapter 9, which is all about special um, joints that we typically focus on. So there's a lot of synovial joints, but we're going to just focus on a few of the most common joints, especially those joints that tend to give us some problems um, as we grow and develop. So the first joint that we'll talk about is that temporomandibular joint. This joint, um, the TMJ, is a joint between the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and the mandibular condyle on the mandible. Between these two bones, we do have articular cartilage that helps to um, decrease compression or pain as so it kind of acts as a shock absorber very much like the meniscus in our knees that's basically what these do there are two major ligaments that hold this joint in place the temporomandibular ligament um, also known as our lateral ligament because it is found on the lateral side of the joint or on the lateral side of the bones so it attaches the temporal bone to the mandible and it holds the jaw in place. And then we have a sphenomandibular ligament that is also known as that medial ligament. And the reason for that is because it's on the medial side. Uh, so before I go to the next slide, I, I don't have a lot written about this joint. I will say that the temporomandibular joint is one of the um, is is a very movable joint. It it um, allows for movement um, as a hinge to open and close, but it also allows movement from side to side. So you can shift your lower jaw sideways, um, slightly or laterally, uh, and with all the movement that our jaw can do and does, sometimes that joint can get very painful or can become painful. Um, typical pain associated with chewing a lot, so if you have like, say, toffee and you're chewing on it for a long period, that can cause pain to your joint. But if you have pain continuously or if you have pain where the joint um, pops out of place, that could be a sign that you have temporomandibular joint disease, um, which is actually a very common disease. In typical treatment, they're going to give you a bite plate or they're going to do something else to protect that joint. The glenohumeral joint, this is the shoulder joint. It is the most movable joint. It has the um, widest range of mo movement so you can move your shoulder in multiple directions but with that increased movability you have less protection or less stability uh, there are multiple ligaments and muscles that are going to help in maintaining the protection of that joint and, and keeping that joint in place so in this joint, we have the glenoid cavity, which is a very, very shallow cavity. It does have um, cartilage that increases the deepness of that cavity to a small extent. And then you have the humeral head that sits into that glenoid labrum. There are three, so there are lots of um, ligaments and tendons that help to protect our joint. Uh, we have the acromioclavicular ligament, the coracoacromial ligament, and then we have three glenohumoral ligaments that are going to hold that humeral head into that glenoid cavity. We also have four rotator cuff muscles uh, that all attach to that humeral head, and they all hold the humerus 
into that glenoid cavity. So they have more than one function. Many muscles do more than one thing. But one of the major functions of the rotator cuff is that it does stabilize that joint, allowing the bones to move a little bit um, easier without worry of the joint coming out of place. Because the humeral head is um, in that joint cavity and it's so shallow, and because the humeral head has so much movement in that joint cavity, it is very unstable and is the most likely joint to pop out of place. We'll talk about some of the dis disorders associated with these joints towards the end of this chapter. Um, the next joint is the elbow joint. Um, also known as humoral ulnar joint, or you could say humoral ulnar radial joint, but um, yeah, it, it's an articulation with all three bones. Um, shoulder joint is a hinge joint, but then you have the radial ulnar joint, which is a pivot joint, but they're all enclosed in one synovial capsule. There are three major ligaments that hold this joint in place. Um, this joint doesn't have near as much movement, so of course you're not, um, we're not as concerned. It doesn't tend to pop out of place as often. At least the um, humoral ulnar joint doesn't pop out of place, I should say. So we have the radial collateral ligament. And now let me see if I, yeah, okay, here we go. Um, and the, and I guess I don't, do I have the, so I don't have the, the ligaments. I have them circled up here. Okay, I see where I have it. Um, we have the radial collateral ligament. We have the ulnar collateral ligament. Um, radial collateral ligament would also be known as a lateral collateral ligament. The ulnar collateral ligament would be the medial collateral ligament on the arm. And then we have an annular ligament. The annular ligament wraps around the radial head so you can see the annular ligament right here and so the radial head is attached to the ulna by the annular ligament and allow so the movement of that head when we when we go from supination to pronation that radial head just turns allowing us to pronate our hand The hip joint is another ball and socket joint. It's also multi-axial, axial, so you have a wide range of motion, but not as much motion as you have with your arm. We have um, three very strong ligaments that hold that femoral head into the hip. And so the when, when we're in class, I'll be going over these bones. But when you see the um, hip, bones, you actually look at the entire coxal bone, you're going to see that there is this very large cavity called the acetabellum. That acetabellum is where the femoral head sits in. And then we have three ligaments that attach to the femoral head in that um, cavity. And so when you stand, these ligaments, they twist and pull the head even tighter into that acetabellum. And this kind of just protects that joint or, or uh, protects the movement of that joint. We also have multiple muscles, again, that are going to be found attaching from the ilium to the femur that are just going to protect that joint as well as allow for movement of the hips. And we have, um, just like we had the glenoid labrum, we have the acetabular labrum, which is fibrocartilage that deepens the socket even more. And because of these protections and because how deep the socket is, we have very few dislocations of the hip. That being said, it is um, not uncommon to see congenital hip dislocations in infants. 
The last joint that I typically talk about is the knee joint, or you could say the femoro-tibial joint or femoro-patellar tibial joint. Um, again, we have three bones there that are associated with that joint. The fibula is there, but the fibula is not part of the joint at all. It, all the fibula really does is it stabilizes the bones. It's not even a weight-bearing bone. So the knee joint is probably the most complex of all of the joints of the body. And it has a joint cavity that surrounds three of the four sides. The patella um, acts as the anterior protector of that joint, while the synovial joint itself is only found on the lateral, medial, and posterior aspects of the joint. Within the joint, we have, and so there is different movements of the joint, but within the joint, we have two menisci, a medial and a lateral meniscus um, that keep, so that not only act as a shock absorber when the femur and tibia are compressed to each other, but these menisci also help to keep the femur um, sitting right on top of the tibia and, does, and don't allow the femur to move off, that fit, off of that um, tibia. I already told you that the joint capsule is only found on three of the four sides. We have the, the patella on the anterior aspect. We also have multiple ligaments and tendons, again, that are going to protect. So anteriorly, we have a quadriceps tendon that wraps around from the femur all the way to the tibia and helps to stabilize the anterior aspect along with the um, patella and the patellar ligament. But we also have um, lateral and medial ligaments that protect the aspect or the um, medial and lateral sides of the femur, tibia, or knee joint. We have those lateral and medial meniscus, which I already talked about, so I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, the lateral ligament is also known as the fibular collateral ligament. Medial ligament is known as the tibial collateral ligament, so you've probably heard of, F, of the LCL or the MCL. Um, that's just the two ligaments that protect the knee joint on the medial and lateral aspects. And then we have two inter, intracapsular ligaments, so those are outside of the synovial joint. Then we have um, the anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate, and you can see them up here, ligaments that protect the um, knee joint anteriorly and Posteriorly, they basically keep the femur stabilized and don't let the femur move back off the tibia or move too far forward off the tibia. So the ACL functions in, sorry, there you go. The ACL functions in um, protecting from hyperextension. And so if you've ever had your knees, move too far back um, that well so that is called hyperextension um, if you've ever been in ballet you probably did that purposely but if the ACL is um, functioning properly it won't let your um, knee bend too far back to the point of pain and injury the PCL then posterior cruciate ligament keeps the femur from uh, moving forward or the tibia from moving backwards um, so it would it would prevent hyperflexion of the knee that would be another way of saying it if you've ever damaged both of those ligaments then taking a step would be very very scary because every time you would like be trying to balance those bones on each other 
without any protections. Um, the reason I know this is because I did just that. I broke my leg and snapped my ACL and um, PCL. So I had to have surgery to fix my, well, my knee, my entire knee. It was really bad. Um, and it was really scary walking, so I had to wear a, a brace around my knee for until they did the surgery just to keep my knee from, you know, having problems. It was really kind of wild. All right, so some of the disorders associated with our joints. Um, so joints can come out of place. I told you that the um, humoral ulnar joint doesn't tend to come out of place, but the radio ulnar joint at the same spot um, does tend to have problems. So the radius, the radial head is really, really small. And so if you don't remember looking at a radius anytime soon, you know, pick one up from the table and look at it next time you're in class. And you'll see that the radial head actually um, is just a really tiny little structure. And when we are young, that head sits in that annular ligament, but it's very, it's, it's not very covered, not, not well covered because it's so tiny. And because of this, any um, jerking of the arm can actually cause the radial head to pop out. And that's what you're seeing here. So this is known as nursemaid's elbow. Right here, you can see that bump. Um, and that bump is the radial head sticking out. Typical treatment is to supinate the arm while um, supporting the, the elbow and then flex the arm until the hand touches your shoulder. That usually will fix it and if that doesn't then you just um, pronate the arm and then supinate the arm again and usually that will fix it. Again, you don't want to do anything without talking to a doctor because you never know if something else is wrong. Um, I do have a video here so you can watch it. All you have to do is click on this and you can see a really cool video um, of a doctor actually fixing this problem. Rotator cuff injuries, these are very common injuries um, in um, people who use their arms a lot, who are lifting heavy things, who are constantly um, like throwing balls. So in baseball, this would be common. Um, anybody who lifts with their arms a lot, this could be common. Um, a rotator cuff injury occurs when you damage the um, muscle or the tendon. And so right here you see that damaged tear in the rotator tendon. Um, since tendons don't have, um, since they are composed of dense regular connective tissue, they don't have a very good blood supply, it takes more time for these to heal and a lot of times they're going to need surgery to repair them on their own. And um, again, I have a video here that you can watch. You can just click on the video or you can click here to see the web page and read more about this as well, okay? And then we have shoulder dislocation. So this is normally what your glenoid cavity and your humoral head should look like. This is the most common joint um, dislocation is anterior. Um, yeah, actually I think it's inferior. I'm sorry, inferior is the most. Um, but commonly dislocated shoulders are one of the most common um, joint disorders because the shoulder joint is so um, freely able to move. So it's the least stable because it has the most mobility. And so here we see anterior dislocation, there's posterior dislocation. A very common dislocation um, actually than more than these two would be inferior dislocation where the glenoid cavity where the humoral head will um, move um, inferiorly down, so away from that glenoid cavity. 
And when that happens, because there's no ligaments down here, it's more easy to have happen. But in all three of these cases, you would have to go to or have a doctor relocate. So basically shift that bone back into place. Um, and again, I have a video right here that shows you um, how dislocations can be fixed. And there's the web page where I got this beautiful picture. Some of the most common sports-related injuries are knee injuries. And so here I have um, a, a common injury, the ACL ligament, um, and we also have a medial collateral ligament torn. ACL dis, um, damage is one of the most common um, damages. And typically when you see a person that has ACL damage, they're going to have to wear a brace because otherwise their leg will continuously hyperextend and that's very painful. Um, if you have a damaged um, medial or lateral ligament, then you're going to likely have to wear that same brace to protect your bones from sliding medial or laterally. Um, oftentimes when you have damage like this, it also comes with damage to the menisci. Uh, when that happens, um, they usually will go in with laser surgery, using laser surgery, and just clean up the damage. Um, and then they can repair the ligaments, um, either using new ligaments from a different region of your body, or they could take a cadaver ligament and use it. And then this is a patellar dislocation. So this is um, oh, just so painful looking. Um, this is I, probably my favorite video on here. So there's a video here, there's a video here. And so you see the knee sitting way over on the lateral aspect. It's supposed to be sitting right up here. Um, this is often seen um, as a knee injury, but it also can be caused by um, faulty genes that cause um, the ligament that your patella forms in not to hold properly. And then that patella can move a little bit more freely. Um, it's painful, obviously it's going to be painful, and they're going to have to physically move that bone back in place. Last thing we'll talk about is osteoarthritis. So here you can see um, bone tissue in a healthy individual. And then here is bone tissue in an individual that has arthritis. So osteoarthritis is old age arthritis. It's also known as wear and tear arthritis. And basically your bones are just being worn out from overuse. This is really common. It's not like um, there's something that people are doing to cause arthritis. Everyone's going to have arthritis as we get older. Um, with osteoarthritis, you have inflammation of that joint. And so typically what you're going to end up doing is they're going to give you um, anti-inflammatory drugs. They're going to tell you to take, you know, ibuprofen or um, they might give you some type of an anti-inflammatory shot to decrease the, the pain. Um, if it was severe damage to the um, joint, they may replace it with a new joint just to um, allow that joint mobility to be there again. Um, and so here we're seeing the hip joint. This can occur in your hands. A lot of people see it in hands. Um, in any joint that you're using a lot. So knees, hands, shoulders, um, hips, of course, are all going to be likely um, regions of the body that have some osteoarthritis. All right, um, I'm going to stop this video. I highly suggest watching these videos, especially this one. This is probably my favorite one. Um, it'll possibly make you go, oh my gosh, like jump 
at one point because it's so wild. But um, also make sure you go over the chapter questions and go over the um, short answer critical thinking application questions, okay? And I will see you in class. Bye.